Hello there, my name is Erica. I'm with Erica's Elegance Weddings and Events, and today I'll be sharing a few holiday decorating tips with you. So today we have a holiday table for Thanksgiving that will surely wow any guests that you may have. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, and then this is actually the first video of many to come where I'll share some of my decorating ideas and tips with you. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of napkin folds that you can utilize for your tablescape. The first one is a pretty simple one. What you'll do is first you'll fold your napkin in half and then crease it a little bit. You may want to iron it. Um, this napkin actually doesn't need ironing because it's pretty thick. And then we're going to fold it again. So you're technically folding it in fourths. And just smooth it out really nicely. And then I actually want to wrap this around my plate, but you can use this napkin in several different ways. But for our tablescape, we're going to wrap it around the plate. And it's very simple. You just pour your plate over, put the napkin on top, bend it underneath. And once you set it down, that actually anchors the napkin in place. And you have a I want to show you a couple of other folds. This one we're going to fold it in half and then we're going to fold it in half again. So again the fourth, same technique. And this time I'm going to fold it over and it's the same type of fold but it gives it a different look. And you can set it on your plate and you can actually position it several different ways, whatever you like. You can turn it one way. I sometimes like the contrast of things not being symmetrical, but it's totally up to you. And you can even pull it off the plate and let it hang off the plate. This one is going to be a menu card napkin fold. So you fold it up. I'm sorry, you fold it down first, and then you fold it up. And now you're going to turn it over and just fold it in thirds. Just so and make sure your edges are out. And you place that on your plate and now you can slide a menu card in there. Nice, simple and elegant. So I'm so excited about my next project, the wooden candlestick holders. I had so much fun creating these. So I started by going to Home Depot to get the wood. I used the pine wood that was already finished and it comes in a 10 foot size. And Home Depot will actually cut it into 12 inches for you. So one foot increments, they won't cut any smaller. So you will actually have to do a little bit of cutting yourself. So for this project, I cut mine down to eight, eight inches. I had some six inches. I had some four inches. And then I have some two inches. And you'll notice here when I cut, you have a little rough edges, but a sander will smooth those out perfectly and you get a nice finished smooth edge. And you'll see here, this one has actually been cut down to size. And so I used a one and a half inch bit, wood bit, and I use that to drill a hole. I wanted my candlestick to be able to fit in there and to fit snugly. And you'll notice that once I drilled the hole, I didn't do any smoothing in the inside of the hole. I just sanded the top of the candlestick holder to give it a nice finished smooth. Give it a nice finished smooth edge. And you see the nice lines on the wood. I just love how the pine looks the pine wood looks and this will give you a nice snug fit mm -hmm. 
and I use a medium weight sandpaper just to give it a nice finishing touch. Next, it's time to paint. And so for this particular project, I wanted to use fall colors. Fall happens to be my favorite season. And so I just love the richness of the colors. And so I use four different colors and I use the premium satin acrylic paint. This one is by Craft Smart and I also use one by Folk Art. I didn't want a shiny finish, which is why I use the satin look. And so I used an orange, I used a brown, I used a red, and then I used a metallic gold because I did want to give it a little bit of richness to kind of offset those other fall colors and they will pair very well together. And now we're ready to paint. And so I just pour a little bit. I use a, a paper plate, but if you have a, a paint board, that works fine. And then you use a sponge brush. And then you want to make sure you don't get too much on your brush because you don't want to get drippings. And you just start. I paint downward initially just to make sure all of the excess paint goes towards the bottom you just you want to get a nice smooth look which is why I use the sponge brush and you do each side and the little overlap that you have you'll be able to smooth it out as you go you want to make sure you get all of the gaps filled in and if you like, you can actually go over it a second time with a second coat of paint, depending on the thickness of the paint. This orange is blending in very well, so we may not need to do a second coat on this one. So make sure you get all your edges. You want to make sure you smooth all of those drippings out as to get a nice smooth look. You may want to wear gloves because you may get your hands a little dirty. For this particular one, because it's the smaller size, I didn't need gloves. And then you want to paint your top. Now I don't paint the inside of the holder because I, again, like contrast, and so the contrast of the wood against the paint, I love that. And then your candle is going to be in there, so no one will see the inside. Wow, I love this color. And you have your finishing candle. Stick holder, you put your candle in. Now you'll get a little wax around the outside. Just because it has a snug fit, you can just scrape that off. And voila, there we have it, our wooden candlestick holders.